All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to solve this equation using the working backwards technique. Now, hello. There's lots of techniques for how to solve an, an algebraic equation. There's the balancing technique. There's the guess and check technique. There's the cover-up technique. Today, in this video, I'm going to show you the working backwards technique. They each have their pros and cons. They all work. Um, so if you don't like this technique, find another one of my videos. But right now, I'm going to show you the working backwards technique. So we begin by looking at this equation, and we say to our, we read this equation like it's a riddle. And this says, I'm thinking of a number. You times it by 3. You add 5. You divide by 2. You get 19. What is my number? So to write that out again, Step one, I'm thinking of a number. Step two, we're going to times it by three. Step three, we're going to add by five. Step four, we're then going to divide by two. And we want the result to equal 19. Okay, so that's the riddle, basically. I'm thinking of a number, times it by three, add five, divide by two, I get 19. What is my number? So to in order to solve that problem and figure out what is this mystery number, we're going to work it backwards. We're going to start by 19 and work up. But instead of dividing by 2, we're going to times by 2. And then we're going to go up again. But instead of adding by 5, we're going to subtract by 5. And then instead of multiplying by 3, we're going to divide by 3. And then we'll end up with our answer. Okay, so that's kind of like our recipe. This is the recipe going down forwards for the riddle, and this is the re recipe going backwards for solving the riddle, kind of unwinding or undoing the riddle. All right, so step one down here says start with 19 and multiply by 2. So we're going to start with 19 and multiply by 2. But of course, whatever you do to one side, you've got to do to the other because it's a balance beam, and we want this teeter-totter, so to speak, to be equal. All right, so we know the right side, right side's going to equal uh, 38. Now over here, uh, I'm going to go into a lot of detail that most teachers don't. I'm going to do use the commutative property and rewrite this a little bit, and this is going to become 2 divided by 2 times... 3n plus 5, the quantity, 3n plus 5. Using the commutative property, this is a multiply by 2, this is a divide by 2, so using the commutative property, we put them together, you get 2 over 2. That's 1. And 1 times anything is itself, so really, I'm going to rewrite this without the parentheses because we now get... 3n plus 5 is equal to 38, because 1 times anything is itself. All right? So I've just done this part of the working backwards. Now we've got to subtract by 5 for both sides. So I'm going to write 3. So I'm going to subtract by 5 over here. But whatever you do to the right side, you've got to do to the left side. So I'm going to squeeze in a subtract by 5 on this side of the equation. So we end up with 3n, and then this, these are additive inverses, plus 5 minus 5, that equals 0. So we get plus 0 equals 33. So really, 3n plus 0, that's equal to 3n. So I'm just going to write that down. 3n equals 33. So, in terms of working backwards, we've just subtracted by 5. So now we have our next step, which is to divide both sides by 3. So we're going to divide by 3, divide by 3, 33 divided by 3, that's 11. And over here, I'm going to use the commutative property, and I'm going to rewrite this, because this is times by 3, this is divide by 3, and I'll use the commutative property to turn it into 3 over 3 times n. And, and really, 
This is a 1. That's a 1. So 1 times n equals n. So you got n is equal to 11. So you've got this big old long riddle. I'm thinking of a number times by 3, add 5, divide by 2, you get 19. We believe that number is n. And if you want to test it out, it would be a good idea. So we can go over here, and we could test it out. We can actually test it out using this little riddle. Start with 11. 11 times 3 is 33. 33 plus 5 is 38. 38 divided by 2 is 19. And sure enough, there's, there's, we got it. So that's, how, that's one way to check it. Or another way to check it would be to replace the n with an 11. Wherever you see the n, you're going to replace it with an 11. So you got 3 times 11 plus 5 divided by 2. And let's do the math. Well, 3 times 11 is 33 plus 5 over 2. And that equals 38 over 2, which equals the 19 that we wanted in the first place. All right, to solve this problem, once again, I'm going to think of it as a riddle. And I'm going to think of it as, so we've got negative 5h plus 15 equals negative 20. And that's the equation, but I'm going to think of it as the, a riddle. I'm thinking of the number h. You times it by negative 5. Then you add by 15. And you get negative 20. What is my number? So that's the riddle that we're thinking of. That's what this equation translates to. I'm thinking of a number times by negative 5, add by 15, I get negative 20. So if we're going to work this problem backwards, that means we're going to start with negative 20, and instead of adding by 15, we're going to subtract by 15. And then instead of timesing or multiplying by negative 5, we're going to divide by negative 5, and that will end up giving us the number, the mystery number that we're looking for. So, over here, let's do it. So it says start down here, and we're going to work our way up. Negative 20, and we're going to subtract by 15. So we're going to subtract by 15. But whatever you do to one side of that equal sign, you have to do to the other. So on our right side, negative 20 minus 15, that equals negative 35. And over here, that's going to be negative 5h plus, and this is going to be 0, because 15 plus 15 minus 15, that equals 0. And of course, that's our additive inverse. So really, we now have negative 5h equals negative 35. So we just over here did this first step working backwards. Now we have another step, which is to divide both sides by negative 5. So over here, we're going to divide this by negative 5. We're going to divide this by negative 5. The right side, pretty darn easy. Pos uh, negative 35 divided by negative 5 equals positive 7. And over here, I'm going to use the commutative property to rearrange this into negative 5 over negative 5 times h. So I'm just using the commutative property to show that negative 5 over negative 5, that's equal to 1. And 1 times h is h. And then, so h is equal to 7. So in this riddle, I'm thinking of a number times by negative 5, I add by 15, I equal negative 20. What is my original number? The original number is 7. All right, in this last example, we've got yet another riddle. And we are it's an equation, but I'm thinking of it as a riddle so that we can work this riddle backwards. And the way we translate this riddle is I'm thinking of a number. I'm going to divide it by 4, 
then step three is subtract by three, and then step four, I end up equaling negative eight. So that's our riddle. I'm thinking of a number, divide it by four, subtract by three, I get negative eight. So to solve this riddle, to figure out that mystery value, we're going to solve it backwards. So we're going to start at negative eight, and instead of subtracting by three, we're going to add by three. And then instead of dividing by four, we're going to multiply by four, and that will give us our value. So let's do it. So we're going to start with negative eight. We're going to add three. So you have to do it to both sides. Because whatever you do to one side, you've got to do to the other. So we're going to add three, add three. And so now the right side's pretty easy. Negative eight plus three, that's negative five. Over here, we've got additive inverses, negative 3 plus 3. So we're going to end up with n over 4 plus 0. And that equals just plain old n over 4, which equals negative 5. So going from here to here, we're just getting rid of that 0 because it's an additive inverse. It doesn't add any value to the problem. So over here, we just added 3 to both sides. Now we're going to multiply by 4 to both sides. So we're going to multiply both sides by 4, the right side, and that's easy. That's negative 20. The left side, I'm going to use the commutative property to rewrite this as 4 over 4 times n. And of course, 4 over 4, that's equal to one whole. And 1 times n gives us n equals negative 20. So we've got our mystery value up here. I'm thinking of a value. Divide by 4, subtract 3, I get negative 8. That mystery value is negative 20.